Howdy folks. We're gonna talk about the dark secret involving with the table saw. <laughs> Halloween or something maybe to bring in this on. The thing is, the safety in regards to where the blade is and there's a lot going on here. This is a dangerous piece of equipment. Probably one of the worst things in the whole shop. In fact, statistics are showing that the table saw is uh, just about king of cutting fingers and cutting people's hands up and things. Keep your hands away from the blade. But uh, I'm gonna show you the schools of thought and I'm also gonna show you the dark side of the other school of thought that nobody seems to wanna to discuss. So we're gonna discuss both of it today. Yeah, let's go. Remind, remember now, this is only for entertainment purposes. I'm not telling you how to use your tools. So here's the basics of uh, anyone that's wanting to use a table saw. I've got a nice piece of one by four, uh, just, some, just some good old pine, grade A pine. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And if you're gonna run it through this saw here, and believe the saw is not plugged in, so stop typing. Uh, the school of thought is basically this, to bring the blade down to where it's just a hair above the cut. This is fine, but you know, a lot of old school guys, including me, I'll just show you this from the other side, that's even better. Really take a look at that. This is what they want you to do. And there's some good things here, because if you were, say, you know, up here in the middle of the, of the cut, and your finger somehow, your hand or slips or something and it gets into this, you can see you're barely gonna get nicked by the saw at that point. So from a safety side, this is probably a pretty good idea for generally most people that are first starting out or they're, they don't use the table saw a lot and they're not used to using it, this sort of idea is really not that bad. The big problem with the saws that's talked about a lot is mostly kickback, but I'm also talking about just, just your hand slipping or something sliding or going wrong suddenly. You don't want to get into this blade. You don't want to get anywhere near it. It's doing 5,000 RPM. And it'll tear through skin pretty easily. And even if you're wearing a bulletproof vest and you get kickback, I think you'll probably still get hurt pretty badly. Anyways, let's get back to this. So here's the blade. And what's happening, if you think about it in terms, the blade is pushing against the wood here. It's really pushing hard here. And it's even pushing down here. Now, of course, at this point, theoretically, this material of the wood is removed. So from about here down, we no longer really have much in the way of pressure, or do we? Well, yeah, we still do, because the wood is starting here, cut, and cut up to here. So the only place that's really not pushing too much is on the back side of the blade. And this is where the slot has now become you know, an open area where there's really not much. The side of the of these blades is probably still catching a little bit of the fiber. So everything is shoving is going that way, hard and heavy. And this is why we're talking about this today because, and you'll notice this saw doesn't have a kerfing knife, which I do want to install something back here to make it safer because I don't want kickback any more than anybody else does. But I just want to take a look to see what's happening and of course like I said uh, some people say the, the rule of thumb was and I've checked with different wood shops an eighth of an inch other schools have said three eighths which three eighths I think is to tell you the truth I think is too high but uh, there's other schools that will go up as high as a half inch and then other people will say uh, let's see if I can even bring mine down low enough where yeah it's just I mean it is just a hair above this board at this point so You'd almost have to break the board with your hand because you still wouldn't probably go, you would yeah, just barely break it between the two pieces. But that's the safest mode right there. Plus have a kerfing knife and if you have the plastic guard, of course they tell you to use the plastic guard. They also tell you to use uh, some kind of noise protection on your ears, uh, good old pair of safety glasses. I have a pair sitting here and also a dust mask, uh, especially around you know, sawdust and wood, a dust mask is a pretty good thing to have. I generally take my saw, it's on wheels, take it outside of the driveway, I cut out there to keep the dust away from me. But yeah, it's, you know, this is what they, this is what the industry is telling me is this is the way, you know, keep it real low. Now, I've learned about more than 50 years ago that 
keeping the blade up like this. Now we try to take a look and see what's happening. This is now more of a downward force right here. So that's a good thing, you know, because you're going to get a really nice cut, but you have all this exposed up here wanting a piece of you or me or whatever. <laughs> and you've got this one here, which is now trying to lift the board this way and trying to push the board down this way. So again, you know, you could still get into and still back in the good old days, we still had kickback. The kerfing knife back here has really, really taken care of a lot of that. And that, that blade is a little bit too high for this cut anyways, for a couple of reasons. But I like my blade pretty high. And I've always learned that that was the way to use the table saw was to keep the blade as high as you can within reason, nothing stupid. But I'm gonna show you something else. When your blade is high like that, and I'll go right up. You now have all this surface area of metal against, against the cut lumber. And that actually sort of helps a little bit to steer the lumber nice and straight through. If everything's lined up good, it'll just help, help it to steer straight through. When you finish the cut, I always let my piece of wood go right off the end and fall. I don't, I don't keep it up here. But a lot of people don't want to talk about this on the wood shows I noticed about keeping the blade a little on the high side. I prefer high. Also, I use things. So let's take a look at what I use. And remember, I have never had kickback, but I've also, when I, years ago, when I had my saws, different saws, and I have this one right now, these are some of the contraptions I've used. This one here to hold the wood down and to, and to push through and control it. I also have this one here, it's the same idea, it's just a wider piece, and I've even cut a couple times where I had a small piece of lumber, and this way I had both sides held as I went through and cut. This one here is for a wider board, and again, same idea. Get it on the get it on the board, and that way, as I'm pushing through, I've got full control over what's happening, and there's very little chance of this lifting because I've got my hand down like this and I'm going by. Now, I don't want this any closer to my fingers than I have to, so if I was making a cut such as like this, I would probably bring, bring the blade down to around 3 eighths of an inch to a half an inch above me, just so that it's just that much further away from me as I go through, and I'm comfortable. That's part of the deal. Now, there's also this piece here. This is made by, well, this is a knockoff, of course. I made this on a 3D printer, but it's basically the, the uh, micro jig, which has a little tongue back here, which again helps. And even micro jig, with making these pieces, you'll notice you have this great big area that's well high for the blade to be passing through. Because remember, this is on top of your wood. So your blade, whatever's up in here, is right here. I don't think this is fantastic. I don't think it's even all that safe. There are a couple of problems with it I've had in the past where the wood cut has stopped and the other piece is, is you know, trying to grab. And it's because this lock back here only holds one piece. The other, the cut side can fly off. Now, we'd have to look at some statistics. Most of it seems to surround between the blade and the fence seems to be where all the, the damage is. So when you're going through here, this piece here could fly off, this piece here can fly off, but the reality is between the fence and the blade, that seems to be where what really gets pinched and out of control and it can you know fling up at you. This loose piece over here that's now cut off generally seems to have a tendency to sort of you know fall away from the blade. I haven't seen one get into the blade and then come back and hit somebody. At least not the cutoff piece that's over on the, I guess we'll call it the scrap or the, the cutoff piece of the wood. These are the, these are just, call them safety pieces. I also have a push stick, which I don't, I can't show you right now. I don't even know where it is. It's, I haven't used it for a long time. Um, here's a, here's a curfing knife off of an old saw. And I'm, like I said, I'm looking at, uh, I'm move this out of the way a little bit, and putting a piece of something back here with maybe, you know, so that I can put something back here like this. So as I'm using the blade, the wood can come across, across here. I've seen a couple of ideas. The other idea I really like that I saw was, I think it was Stubby over there. Stubby Nubs had, had made one of these up, and he put a small, like a three-quarter inch high kerfing uh, knife back here. And that way, when he's doing a straight cut, 
the little curfew knife is already in place right here and 90 degree and I think you could make another one that's say a 45 degree curfing knife because that's the only two angles on a table saw that I use 99.9% .9 of the time. Every once in a while you come up with a, a specialty. I have had to cut, you know, 12 and a half degree cuts, you know, stuff like that, but very rare. You just don't get a lot of it. And really the dark thing is that nobody wants to talk about is this whole situation with old school. We used to be told to, you know, keep the blade as relatively high as you can to get the best possible cut. So there is two different schools of thought going on here. The safety end of it, keep the blade down as low as you can, less chance of getting nicked or getting into it. And I don't have a, too much of a problem with that. I have noticed when I've got the blade down like this, I do have a lot of workforce going on here where you know the, the wood wants to fly back, it wants to crawl up on here, and it wants to get at me kind of thing. And I have always been far more comfortable, personally, keeping it up like that and it just upsets a lot of people and I get a lot of nasty mail about it and saying don't show this to anybody it's a dark secret don't let it out of the bag or something uh, it's really uncommon sense uh, I would have to agree with the safety folks out there that yeah keeping the blade like that down by the lumber like this that is probably the safest thing to do and it but when you get old old timer that's been 50 years into it this is probably what you're gonna see is, you know, like that, where we've got all kinds of blade over top of that lumber. But look at the tools I'm using to control that lumber with. I'm not anywhere near my fingers. Nothing's really that close to that blade. And in the 50 plus years of using table saws, I have never had kickback. I have no injuries and I don't want any injuries off these. I like to enjoy this hobby like anybody else. I don't wanna get hurt. I didn't go to the garage to go cut a finger off for the day. <laughs> You know, and I don't want anybody else to either. I, I, I just love the idea of the folks getting out there and cut a piece of wood. Just sometimes it just feels good to cut a piece of wood. <laughs> so just recently, about a week ago, the Denim Tools did a list and table saws were number one for getting hurt. <sighs> Not good. And some people that are fairly, well, they fairly popular names in the industry have been hurt by table saws. This one is a beast. It has no riving knife. Ooh. You know, uh, there's no plastic guard, of course, up here. And this blade, as a matter of fact, that's a 12 inch. So that's a bad boy. Respect it, you know. <laughs> yeah, respect it. <laughs> the thing is, is I control my piece and I also take uh, take into account everything that could possibly happen and then you know I may make my cut I'm gonna point something out because it comes up once in a while with a table especially with the table saws uh, this is too big to show you but say I had a small strip of wood that was three-quarters of an inch wide and I wanted to just nick it down a little bit further I'm not gonna use my table saw for that okay it's just not gonna happen it's too small it's too dicey it's a possibility that you or you know we could get hurt so what I'll do is either use a, uh, a handsaw and, and I'll even take a board and I'll clamp it to the side of my work table and take my little handsaw and run through it or take a planer if need be, whatever it takes to cut it down. But I won't use a table saw if a piece is too small and it, it looks to me like, oh, this is too dangerous. It's putting my fingers too close to the blade. I won't do it. And over 50 years, like I said, I haven't been hurt. I've enjoyed table saws, love them. This is, uh, I can't even tell you which one this is. This is probably about the eighth or 10th table saw I've had in my lifetime that's here. I just finished, of course, refurbishing this little guy and love it. But I will be putting a riving knife on it even if I think I don't need one. I'm gonna put one on anyways because if it's gonna help kick, you know, prevent kickback, absolutely. There's a little notch on the back side of these blades. You've probably seen them show up these days and it has a little dip. Past the blade, you'll see a little dip right there. And uh, if I, let's close in on that a little bit. So let's see if we have enough light for this. Yeah, I think we do. This little dip right back here behind the blade and it sort of rises up a little bit. That actually helps to prevent kickback 
on these blades. So that's something that's actually a good thing. So if your blade has that, that's a good thing. If your blade doesn't have that, you might want to consider going and finding a blade that has this little dip on the back side because that will help to prevent kickback. Like I said, we, re we all want to enjoy the hobby you know use the most common sense when we're using power tools especially this number one machine here that helps to you know hurt everybody and do as much as we possibly can to be safe with them the dark the dark side of it i hope we've covered it a little bit for you so you can understand wow so there you have it the dark side was we were told 50 something years ago Put the blade as high as you can or whatever you're most comfortable with in order to get the best possible cut. And part of the reason was they had this theory at the time that the blade coming down this way on more of an angle would give you a better cut and also go through the board better, whatever. So it hasn't been talked about. Nobody seems to want to talk about it. And I just thought, guys, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give it to you. No, it's not safe, but it was done in the past. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully we'll get into some more interesting things in the coming, uh, next coming few sh uh, shows. Right? All right. Anyways, over and out.